Hi and welcome again to another tutorial. This is Dr. Mughal and this is a very very interesting lab. Uh, in this lab we are going to convert the binary code uh, BCD number system into a decimal uh, system. Uh, so you will be using basis 3 board and we're going to use uh, it's going to be an 8-bit binary number uh, and we're going to convert that into a VCD uh, on, uh, to a decimal number. So with 8 bits you possibly have a range of 0 to 255. Um, so we will be implementing that on a basic 3 board using the 7 segment display. Uh, I'll be breaking it down so uh, just so it is easier for you to understand how uh, you know we are uh, putting together different source files in order to create this project. So please give your fullest concentration and uh, watch this tutorial till the very end. But the simplest task uh, uh, we have here is basically the user will have this option to enter the uh, binary number using the eight switches on the board and then that binary number will be converted into, um, uh, into a BCD number system. Uh, those of you who are not really familiar about the BCD system, um, it's a, it goes from zero to nine uh, and each uh, uh, each decimal dis uh, digit is represented by a four bit uh, binary number. So say you have two four, 264 right here. Uh, you take each decimal d digit and uh, break it down into a four bit binary number. Uh, so a four bit binary code for two is 0010. Uh, and then for six is 0110 and similarly for four is 0100. Um, binary to BCD converter because we are using 8-bit uh, binary number system uh, and uh, which can represent an integer in the range from 0 to 255 which I just mentioned so you would basically need 4 bits for uh, for this uh, units 4 bits for tens and 4 bits to represent uh, your uh, hundreds so it are you so you're looking at a total of a 12 bit B, uh, BCD. Uh, we can also get it done with 10 bit because the third uh, the hundreds is not going to go above two. So for that we can only need two bits um, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and one one. So, um, but we will uh, will uh, will do it with a 12 bit BCD system. Um, the first thing that we need to learn it uh, about learn in this tutorial is how are we going to convert the binary number to BC. Uh, for this, we are going to utilize the shift and add three algorithm. And I'm gonna quickly go through this uh, this algorithm. How we can take a binary number and then convert it into uh, a BCD code. Uh, there are really four steps, and it's they're pretty easy. And uh, uh, those steps are right here shift the binary number left one bit uh, if eight shifts have taken place bcd number is in the hundreds tens and units and column i'll show you in a minute what does that mean if the binary value in any of the bcd column is five or greater add three to that value in that bcd column and then repeat step number one okay so we'll keep those steps in mind and then we're gonna move on to this table right here so Say for example, let's convert uh, FF, which is double one double one double one double one, into BCD format by using the above algorithm. We know FF makes a, a binary code, uh, basically a BCD code of two fifty five. So here is that uh, binary number right here. Now, first step is going is going to be shifting the bit to the left uh, one by one. So we shift. Uh, the bit to the one and you got three columns three BCD columns one for units one for tens and one for hundreds and we look up the binary the decimal value of this uh, uh, these numbers if the decimal value of these uh, numbers uh, is equal to five or more we add three to it right now it's one we uh, shift again for the second time so this bit goes over here this bit comes over here this bit comes over here so you shift it to the left uh, now this is 3, again this is less than 5, so you do another shift. Shift number 3, this bit goes here, this bit goes here, and this bit goes here. Now the decimal value of this binary number is 7, and because this is more than 5, so we add 3 to it. 
So here we add 3, 7 plus 3 is 10. 10 makes a code of 1010. Okay, all right. Then we shift again to the left. One, this one goes here. This zero goes here. This one goes here. This zero goes here. And this one now moves over here. We take a binary value, uh, the decimal value of this binary number, which is five. Now, because it's five, we add we need to add three to it. So we add three, five plus three, eight. Eight makes a code of one triple zero. That is eight. Okay. And then uh, we shift again. This one moves over here. This one moves over here. And similarly, you will keep on doing this until you finish eight shift. Once you finish eight shifts, then you will have this binary number right here, which then we convert it to a BCD code. We know that zero, uh, one zero makes a code of two, 0, 1, 0 makes a code of 5 and 0, 1, 0 makes a code of 5 so that's 255 and that's what we started with initially if you look it over here double one double one double one double one that's that makes a bcd uh, code of 255 and you see how we can use this shift and add three algorithm to convert a binary number to a bcd okay so this was the basics on how we are going to convert the binary number into a bcd code uh, also, here's a truth table uh, for it. Uh, again, you know, uh, four uh, inputs A0, A1, A2, and A3. For each of the decimal numbers, we have four bits. Uh, and notice when the value, binary value is, uh, the decimal value is five, we add three, so the output becomes one zero zero. Six, six plus three is nine, one zero zero one makes a code of nine. And similarly 1001 which is again greater than 5 so 9 plus 3 is 12 and the code for 12 is 1100 uh, and because bcd only goes from 0 to 9 anything after that is considered as don't care okay moving on to the next part right here the very first thing now we are going to do here is we are actually going to create a, a, the shift and add 3 algorithm using the very log uh, so let's move on to that part. So let's create a new uh, source file. This is going to be for the shift uh, and add three module. So maybe I can say algorithm. Click OK. Click finish. Uh, now looking at the truth table right here, we basically have four inputs, okay, and then we have four outputs here, okay. All right. So say my inputs, I'll say I N uh, and then I have four of those and then outputs as an out uh, again I'll just declare it as a buzz in four of those click OK here I'll wrap up the uh, I'll start uh, putting here uh, looking at the truth table if the input is zero 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 then the output should also be zero 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 because this binary value uh, does not doesn't equal five or exceed five okay so how would I say that in very long I'm gonna use the always command uh, add and because um, the value is the output is dependent upon the value the decimal value of the input so i have to say in and i'm going to use a behavioral model here so i'm going to use a case statement uh, in which i'm basically looking at my inputs uh, so if the input is all zeros then the output will be equals to zero also and that's what I have over here if the all the inputs are zero 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 the output will also be zero 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 okay so uh, again these are my four inputs uh, outputs here okay uh, here basically what I'm doing here Describing an event that should happen to input when a certain condition is met. 
Okay. Uh, and here, the case statement is basically a decision. That executes the statement. Okay. All right. Now here, I'm going to move on to the next case, which is if the binary value is one, then also my output should equals b zero zero one. Okay. I can just copy and paste it uh, nine times because we have nine cases here zero to nine it, it will go up to 15 but I'll just use a default function there zero zero one zero so this will also be one zero and one one so this will also be one one zero one two three four the binary code for four is one zero 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 two five six Seven, eight, nine. Now five is one zero one. Now going back to the truth table, when binary code is one zero one zero, which is equal to decimal of five, because it's uh, equal to five, we have to add three. So five plus three is eight, which is one triple zero. Code for eight is triple zero one triple zero. Three here, uh, then we have six. The code for six is one one zero. Uh, six plus uh, three is nine, so one zero zero one. Adding three here again. Six is greater than nine, uh, greater than five. Here, this is a seven, so it will be zero triple one. And then zero, 7 plus 3 is 10, so 1010. Zero, one, zero. 7 plus 3 is 10, 1010. Zero, one, zero. And then 8 plus 3 is 11. 11 code, uh, the code for 11 is 1011. Zero, one, one. One, one, one. 9 is 1001. Zero, zero, one. Uh, 9 plus 3 is 12, which is 1100. Zero, zero. Uh, and the 9 code is 1. Alrighty. And uh, by default, it is set to 0. I'm gonna say end case here and then I already have the end module so the code is complete for the add 3 module I'm going to save it and run synthesis here it will take a few seconds to complete the synthesis it gave me this error uh, procedural assignment to a non-registered output is not permitted because we are storing a value in this uh, output variable out, so I have to. Uh, ooh, I have. I'm mentioning. I should be saying it as an output, uh, and then also I can declare it as a register because we will be storing this value. So save it again and then uh, run it. Again. went through it was successfully synthesized we're not going to run the implementation yet because we're not done yet i'm gonna move on to our next part which would be to uh, convert the binary to uh, bcd and for that we need to look at the block diagram of it
So here is the 8-bit number right here, B0, uh, B7. Okay, these could be switches. Um, and it is going to take uh, the first uh, four, uh, first three significant bits, uh, most significant bits here. Um, by default, this will be zero right here. This block diagram that you see over here basically reflects uh, this table right here. Okay, uh, when you uh, look at when the first addition happens, that is bef just before that, you had it all bits. Uh, obviously, this is uh, 255, which is double one, double one, double one, double one. Uh, before the first add uh, addition happens, the uh, it was zero triple one and then double one double one one, and that's what you see over here, uh, zero double one and then all uh, bits one basically, right? Uh, and because this makes it one one one, this which is seven, uh, again greater than five, so you have this add module which adds three to it, which means uh, this becomes 7 plus 3 becomes 10 so you get 1 0 1 0 and again this takes uh, 0 1 0 1 which is 5 again a 5 so we had you need to add uh, a 3 module so it goes to this add 3 module which we just created and this gives you 1000 1000 right 1 triple 0 makes a code of 8 and then you have this triple 0 going uh, 1 into going into the C3 and so on and similarly if you look at the c6 add 3 model you got 6 it will add 3 more to it which will become 9 so you got 1001 uh, you see the shift um, and similarly over here if you see the c5 you have 0 triple 1 going in there 7 plus uh, 3 is 10 so you got 1 0 1 0 and then you got 1 which is over here um, so basically if you look at the after all these ads and shifts to the left you see you got one zero zero one zero one zero one zero one zero one zero one makes a code of five zero one zero one makes a code of five and one zero makes a code of two this is exactly what we had over here so if you follow through this table right here uh, and then uh, try to correlate this uh, with this uh, block diagram right here and this is uh, what, what is our next step we have created this add 3 module algorithm uh, we just need to instantiate this uh, one two three four five six seven times uh, because we have seven of those and then uh, we're going to use uh, wires wires which are going into these add 3 modules and wire which are going coming out of these modules okay uh, so let's start the coding for that Let's create a new a source file uh, and then like finish here and here if you look at the table right here so you got eight inputs which are B0, B1, B2, B3, B4, B5, B6 and B7. Uh, I'm just gonna use uh, variable A for it and declare it as an, as an array so we'll go to 0 to 7 okay and then we you have the outputs which are units tens and hundreds units is going to be a combination of four bits tens also is a combination of uh, four bits uh, for the hundreds because it's eight bits so it will only go to 255 so you're looking at two which can be generated using two bits like i mentioned earlier so uh you we can declare them as uh ones uh, this is going to be the output uh, and again this is we just need four bits with that tens uh, output and then for hundreds we just uh, need two of those okay we're going to click OK here here is the file uh, so let's start coding. Uh, the first thing we need to do is to declare all these wires. Uh, the wires, uh, those are coming out of each add three module. Uh, we'll say C. And we need how many of those? We need 
uh, because we have seven so we need seven of those so we'll say C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, C7. What it means, if you look at these add modules, I got 7 of those C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, C7. And it's every time it's taking, uh, it's taking, um, it's, it's actually throwing 4 bit numbers. 0, 1, 2, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3. Similarly over here, 0, 1, 2, 3, right? So I can just say, uh, you know, uh, declaring the data lines going, uh, not going, coming out. Each add 3. Shift add three model. Okay. Similarly, uh, the wires right here, right here, which are going into add three module, we can declare them as uh, say, and again there are four of those, so we declare them as an array, and those could be D one, uh, D two. D3, D4, D5, D6, D7, uh, so I can just copy from here and declaring the data lines going into each Here. Okay, now we'll just follow the block diagram here. Coding becomes a lot more easier when you look at the block diagram. Okay, we'll start off with the uh, D1 first and we're going to use the assign function. Remember, D is the data lines that are going into each uh, shift add 3 module. So I'll say assign. Uh, D1 equals to uh, and then what is going into uh, the C1 modules so you got 0 going in this is the leftmost is 0 so I can just say uh, this bit is 0 comma and then you have A5 A6 and A7 going in okay those are the data lines so 7 uh, and that's what all I have uh, going into C1 um, let's now look at C2 uh, uh, the C2 the things that are going into C2 you have uh, this C1, so you have uh, 0, 1, 2, 3. So you have 0, 1, and 2. C1, 0, 1, 2 going in. You say assign D2. C1, 0. And also we have this B4, which is A4, actually. A4 going in. Similarly, I'm going to do it for each of these add modules. What is going uh, going through this C3? We'll, it's, this is C2, 0, 1, 2, 3. So 0, 1, 2, C2 going in and then we have B3 going in. So I'll just copy and here. C2, 0, 1, 2 going in and then A have a3 going in here going here so follow along this block diagram right here and then complete the code
So I finished this part of the code where I have assigned the values for D1, D2, D3, D4, D5, D6 and D7. Uh, looking at this block diagram, uh, which is basically a reflection of the shift in the three module. Okay. So once I have that, all I need to do is basically um, uh, instantiate the shift add three module or algorithm and I'm gonna have to do that times I'm gonna have to do it seven times uh, And that will be uh, making sure this name exactly matches with the one I have over here. Shift add three this algorithm followed by an identifier. It's a U not uh, the the inputs are basically your D's and uh, into this add three module, shift three module, and the outputs are D's. Okay. So I can just say C uh, D1 comma C1 and basically copy and paste it seven times. Yet. Okay. So um, you look at this one right here uh, this module right here the inputs going in are um, D's okay the input going in are D into the C2 module and the output coming out of the C2 is C okay so C2 D2 comma C2 well this will be D3 comma C3 D4 comma C4 D5 comma C5 C6 comma D6 and then D7 comma C7 don't forget to change the identifier name U6 U5 U4 U3 U2 uh, and say this is U1 okay uh, let's go ahead and save this file uh, the code is not done yet we still need to work on our outputs which are units tens and hundreds so I'll start with the units uh, right here sign units equals to what is going in uh, you have C five zero one two three okay uh, C five uh, actually two two zero I got zero yeah zero one and two going into here zero one and two and then this is actually B naught which is A naught um uh, A naught here. Uh, okay. Assign tens. One stands. How much? Uh, tens equals to are uh, these four bits? Okay. So we have C five three zero one two three C five three. Uh, then we have C7012. Okay. C7012. And the last one, which is. Right. Okay. And that one includes C73. C63.
0123 and then this C63 0123 right. um, I think my code is pretty much done here uh, again you know these are the four bits uh, that will make up uh, uh, ones um, these are the four bits that will make up your tens and these are the bits that will make up uh, hundreds uh, and also here basically what we did here um, uh, using the shift add three module you to perform uh, operation on uh, C's and D's uh, in uh, data lines uh, and over here uh, all these are the inputs are going into C1, C2, all the way to C7. Okay. I'm going to save this file. Uh, looks like I got a couple of errors. Um, so let's look at a wish. I need one more for backslash. Save it. And then I'm going to and you see it, it instantiated this shift add three uh, module seven times here go click here and then warnings how we already oh yeah so okay. it's giving me error line 36 oh I'm missing the input here so it just needs to be a assign d1 so again d1 here uh, a5 a6 a7 a5 6 7 and then 0 leftmost bit 0 so I got 0 here uh, okay save it again um, perfect perfect uh, I'm gonna click my source file and then synthesize it for everything okay Okay, perfect. This is done too. I'm going to close this dialog box and now I'm going to move on to the slow clock part. Because we are going to be displaying the answer on LED 7 segments uh, and the basis 3 board has a frequency of 1 MHz. So we need to slow down the frequency. Now the question is, why do we need a slow clock? If you look at your basis 3 board, on the bottom left, you see four LED7 segments. Because we are using eight binary, uh, eight binary bits to display uh, the BCD code. Sorry about that. Uh, we need at least three of those LED7 segments. Now, if we enable all three or all four of the seven segments at the same time, how are we going to display? for uh, three different digits on those seven segments. Uh, so the answer is you have to trick your eyes. We are going to put one of this segment on for a very short amount of time while the other two are off and then switch to this one. This will be on and these two will be off for a very short amount of time. And then this will be on and these two will be off for a very short amount of time. We'll do that at such a frequency that our that a human eye cannot cannot catch the toggling of these LEDs uh, switching on and off and you would think those uh, light uh, uh, LED segments are illuminated uh, at the same time uh, without being uh, you know switched off uh, and therefore we need uh, if we are going to work on this block diagram right here uh, we have these switches 
we just made this block this model right here where binary number is going to be converted to the BCD now our second goal is to make sure we have one of these LED 7 segment on at a time so therefore we would need uh, a slow uh, frequency uh, we are going for uh, 100 Hertz when the uh, when the clock uh, when the edge of the clock arrives the counter will start and the counter will go uh, from 0 to 3 because it's a 2-bit counter once uh, the counter is set to 0 initially uh, which would mean uh, the leftmost LED is going to be 0 at all times because 8-bit binary number is going to generate a 3 decimal digit number 255 at the max okay so this needs to be 0 at all time so therefore we are setting uh, these bits to 0 okay and then this represents the hundreds this represents the tens and this represents the ones um, or uh, it may be the sequence may be a little different okay whatever uh, so when it's set to zero zero uh, means the selector switches are set to zero zero so it, this data will pass through the binary to seven segment this is a segment which we have done in one of the other videos so zero zero will display zero over here okay uh, what is decoder doing over here once this counter is initially set to zero zero it will only enable the uh, only enable let me go back, let, it will enable this uh, seven segment okay display these three uh, or these two will be off similarly uh, when uh, the the next clock edge arrive the counter goes up by one this time the counter is zero one zero one would mean this will go past through the binary seven segment and instead of this this LED will light up and the your ones uh, will be represented over here okay so this will happen uh, one by one uh, the next clock edge comes in the counter goes up by one this time the counter is two uh, uh, two would mean uh, tens will go uh, and that will be con converted into a seven segment uh, and then the second uh, uh, se uh, seven segment will be displayed we are missing one seven segment over here which will be zeros uh, hundreds tens and ones okay the last one when the timer goes to three the zeros will go past to the seven segment and will be displayed over here uh, while zero zero would mean uh, this uh, LED will be on for a very short amount of time while these two will be off again this is all happening so fast that the human eye cannot catch it and all these decimal th three different decimal numbers on seven segment display at the same time okay so um, I know it's a lot for this tutorial but but uh, try to uh, gauge these things and try to look at these block diagrams and then follow uh, you know you should always fall back upon this one when you get stuck we just created a very log file, uh, very log code for this module right here. Uh, we're now gonna do it for the clock, um, and then so on. We do it for counter, mux, and decoder. Binary se uh, seven segment we have already done it in the past, so I'll go through it real quick, and then we will make a top module which would include everything, each of these modules. Okay. All right. So let's uh, let's begin. Okay. So just a little bit of theory uh, here. Um, as you can experiment later in this lab, the LED display is not stable, it's switching too fast. If the switch frequency is slower than 45 Hz, you can clearly see the shifting digits. We opt to use a slow clock at 100 Hz or a clock period of 10 milliseconds. Uh, on a basis 3 board, the default clock is 100 MHz and we need to cut it down to 100 Hz. So how we do that? So let's look at over here. Um, we are going to generate a counter so we are going from uh, 100 megahertz to 100 hertz correct so uh, 100 megahertz to uh, 100 hertz which means that you have 
hundred uh, for mega you got six zeros divided by hundred hertz equals to you have this many number of cycles Um, now notice your uh, your cycle is basically uh, and because uh, square wave the uh, one complete cycle which completes the positive half wave and the negative half wave um, well, I say positive negative, uh, but it really is a 50% duty cycle square wave where it's zero for 50% of the time and then high for negative uh, for the 50% of the time. So uh, one triple zero triple zero cycles would mean half of its cycles, it will be off and for the half of the cycle, it will be on. So if I take a half of it, which it comes down to uh, five hundred thousand cycles okay so this number will change to five hundred thousand uh, and basically what it means we will use a counter in our uh, very log code for the slow clock it will start from zero and go us uh, will increment by one and it will go up to five hundred thousand once it goes to five hundred thousand it resets itself uh, goes back to zero and then uh, the clock will go from low to high okay and it stays high for uh, um, again for it for the 500,000 cycles and once it reaches 500,000 it reset itself and the clock goes from high to low okay so this is how uh, we are going to code a uh, slow clock using the counter so I've already created the code for the slow clock and uh, I will just quickly um, explain that over here. Here uh, is the uh, input clock uh, which is uh, 100 megahertz from, megahertz from the basis 3 board. Okay. Um, the output is going to be clock uh, out uh, and uh, that is going to be the slow clock at 100 Hertz frequency we are going to use a counter uh, and because I told you guys that we are looking at the value of 500,000 so we would need 20 bits 20 bits would be uh, would be enough um, 2 uh, power 20 gives you go up to uh, 1048576 okay uh, we only need to go to this number right here, 50,000, like we discussed uh, earlier. So, to the 20 bits should be enough. Actually, this will be 21. 0 to 20 is 21. So, it's more than enough. I'm also declaring my register uh, clock out as a register. Um, and then I'm choosing the uh, positive edge of the clock. Whenever uh, the positive edge of the clock uh, the counter should go up by one counter uh, goes up by one uh, once it reaches once the counter reaches the value of 50,000 should be 500,000 um 500,000 okay the counter should reset itself counter should reset itself to zero and the 
uh, clock signal shirt go shirt in word okay. and then stays inverted for 500,000 and then you know inwards back again okay perfect uh, and I finish the code by saying and module I'm going to save it uh, and I'm going to synthesize it just making sure if everything was fine let's click here and it should take few seconds so this went through as well I'm going to close this dialog box um, awesome now let's look at the block diagram again so we got taken care of this one we have taken care of the clock now we're gonna move on to the binary to seven seconds the, the reason I want to jump to is this because it's something we have also done in one of the other tutorial um, but this time we're gonna use it using the behavioral model binary to seven segment um, the way it's going to work it's basically we're gonna use the case statement here uh, if uh, you know in case if y uh, which is basically um, if your this value is equivalent to zero uh, which would mean the seven segment a b c d e f g those should be the value should be a b c d e F should be zero because it's active low and then G segment which is the middle one right here should be off because zero represents in order to represent zero and seven segment all the segments should needs to be light up except for this middle one okay similarly if you look at the if you want to display one uh, if the Y this value coming through the binary segment represents a decimal value of one then the output should be uh, so you should have segment B and segment C on uh, b and because it's active low so B and C should be set to 0 B and C set to 0 A and D E F G are all set to high okay so here 7 bits represent the 7 segments A to G on the display remember we provide active low logic to the display uh, to display 0 all segments uh, are set to 0 except for G to display one B and C are set to zero and rest are on ones which I just mentioned so we're gonna do it for all of it uh, going from 0 to 15 uh, so let's just uh, create a new source file I'm going to name it BCD seven segment click OK uh, click finish let's look at the block diagram the output that's coming of the mux is actually a four bit so I'll just refer to it as uh, Y um, so this is my Y and it's a 4-bit data so this will be a bus and then the output that comes out of the seven segment uh, is going to be uh, uh, basically seven bits right so a b c d e f g uh, which is uh, uh, seven bit data for a b c d e f g okay so and I'll just say this is display um, this will be my output again this is going to be 0 to 6 and then I click OK let's begin the coding if you wish you can register your output here as registers um, and then we are gonna start with the always uh, statement always at Y uh, basically what I'm saying is uh, we are describing an event that should occur when a certain condition is met okay uh, and I'm gonna start off with the begin and say case uh, and then we have 15 cases basically okay uh, and then those are start off with a zero uh, so if zero So if the binary code here represents a decimal value of zero, so we need to display zero here. Display two. Everything A, B, C, D, E, F. Everything will be zero except for G, which will be one. 
Uh, again, I can mention it here. Seven bits are A, B, C, D, E, F, G segments. Okay. Similarly, one uh, display would be seven. Oh, I'm missing a B here. Is copy. Uh, A will be um, 1, B, C will be 0, 0, and everything will be 1 because then it's an active low. B from here. So I've pretty much finish the code with my case statements uh, and uh, I can just verify one more maybe when the, uh, the decimal value of the binary code is equivalent to 9 over here which would mean everything needs to be displayed here except for this segment um, this and this segment these two so A B C D and E D and E needs to be off everything else needs to be on so D and E A B C D needs to be off E needs to be off A B C D needs to be off E needs to be off F needs to be on and G needs to be on. Okay. And similarly, if you look at this right here, seven, uh, which would mean uh, this segment, this segment, and this segment, A, B, C would be on. So A, B, C would be zero, and then the rest of these segments are high. Okay. Uh, also, let's verify this six also. Six. Mm, everything will be on except for this segment right here which is B so B is 1 and rest of the other segments are 0 so it looks good okay so I'm just going to uh, finish this by saying end case uh, end and end module let's go ahead and save it uh, and then I'm going to just synthesize it just making sure everything goes fine it might take a few seconds so just be patient okay yay it went through again uh, we're not gonna worry about implementation for now we're gonna close this dialog box and uh, let's move on to the next module uh, which is going to be if you look at the block diagram we got taking care of this this and this let's move on to two bit counter now so the input going into two bit counter is the clock remember this is a slow clock which we made clock out and the output is actually two bits okay so let's create a new source file so the input is clock and the output is say q q0 and q1 so uh, q0 and q1 click ok um, I'm going to go to this here and I'm gonna start off uh, by saying um register one zero okay uh, initially the temp uh, the counter is um uh, the value is the of the counter is set to zero and i'm going to use the always at uh, when the positive edge of the clock arrives um, then the counter uh, goes up by one, okay, uh, and then end sign q equals to t e f p, uh, and then in the last I'll say the end module. Okay. So it's pretty simple. Uh, you have your uh, slow clock here. Okay, um, you have your 
uh, initially uh, counter is set to zero uh, when positive edge of the clock arrives uh, counter goes up by one here and then basically uh, value of the counter gets stored in Q. Q okay. So I can uh, there there's a register. Okay, all right. I'm going to save it and then synthesize it. Uh, looks like I got an error. Um, if it gave me this error because I'm missing a semicolon here. So let's just save it again. And yeah, I think that was the error. This is done as well. I'm going to synthesize as well. And then hopefully it goes through. Now let's work on the mux. Uh, if you look at the block diagram, you got a two bit counter. The output of it is connected to both decoder and mux. Uh, and uh, mux is controlling what data should go past the binary 7 segment, and a decoder is allowing which 7 segment to be enabled at the same time. So if this is supposed to represent zeros, uh, uh, sorry, ones, tens, uh, and hundreds. So, which would mean when this is set, or oh, we can actually look at this table right here. This might be a little more helpful. Okay, so say the two bit counter is set to zero, zero, which is the initial state. That would mean it should, uh, the mux should allow the ones to go past and then the rightmost seven segments should be enabled and rest of the three uh, seven segments would be disabled. When the counter goes to one, zero, one, that is when the data on the tens should go past the marks and it should display it on the second LED from the right. Okay. And similarly, the hundred would be displayed when the uh, counter is set to one, zero, and when the counter H is one, one, this is when the leftmost seven segment should display zero, but we are actually uh, keeping it off for all the times, okay? So, if you look at the mux, you basically have four inputs right here. Uh, uh, those, what are those four inputs? Uh, those four, four inputs are basically, uh, the leftmost segment is zero, and then you have ones, tens, and thousands. Uh, the ones, tens, and hundreds. Um, so, uh, one, zeros, ones, tens and hundreds and this is your selector switch because you got four input you need to have two of those and then your output is obviously going to be a four bit data uh, so let's do the coding for it now so looking at the inputs you got a b c d and two selector switches okay so you got a b c and d all are four bit data Uh, remember your hundreds, uh, you know, um, your hundred, because it's an 8 bit, so it will only go up to like 255. So you can actually use only 2 bits, but I'm still gonna use 4 bits, that's okay, it's not gonna make any difference. Uh, so I am having 4 on all uh, so zeros, ones, tens, and hundreds, and then we need selector switches. Uh, I'll say select the switches SS inputs. Um, those will be two of those, and then the output, which is uh, going to be uh, let's say Y. Y, and again, this is going to be uh, four bit data. Click OK, and then let's just quickly. Uh, do the coding here okay 
start off with uh, always at and then we are what are the parameters on which uh, the output is dependent upon those are a or b or c or um, well we can include that or uh, select the switches okay uh, and then we have again uh, and then we say case uh, and those would be um, select the switches and two when the selector switches are set to zero zero that means y is going to be equal to a I just finished the code uh, so I could save some time uh, so we basically have four possible combinations where selector switch uh, could be set to zero 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 one if it's set to zero zero that means a will go pass through and zero one B will go pass through uh, and the value will get stored in the Y which we have declared as an output Let's look at the block diagram here again. So if this is 0, 0, A will go past and will get stored in Y. If this is 1, 1, then D will go past and get stored in Y. Um, so let's just... Um, and then uh, I will click the... select the source file and then uh, run it just to make sure everything goes fine. Perfect. Awesome. This goes through as well. Uh, let's uh, close this dialog box. Now we're going to work on decoder. So let's look at the uh, block diagram again. We got taken care of this module. This module, this module. We have taken care of slow clock and 2-bit counter. The last thing is we actually, um, before we put together everything on a top module, we need to get uh, a decoder done. So it looks like the, uh, the two bits coming out of counter going into decoder as inputs. And the four outputs are going to the seven segment displays. I mentioned earlier one of the segments is missing, so uh, we got four of these, and then each of these will be going to the four displays that we have on the uh, basis three port. So one, two, three, four. These each of the output from decoder will be connected to each of these seven segments. Um, let's look at the uh, in a block diagram form. This is what we have, right? Uh, okay, let's start decoding. Input going in are EN0 and EN1, which is basically counter. So let's say EN, uh, and then let's declare it as an array. And then the enable, which is AN. So let's say AN, and we, got, we need to have four of those. Um, A. Let's begin coding. I'm going to start off by saying always at um, so it's the EN which is the counter uh, on which the, what LED is turned on is based upon so this is Uh, I'm gonna use case keyword here again uh, and then EN so if the value of the counter is zero that means uh, the rightmost LED will turn on okay and counter is one then the second LED the right And remember, you know, we have a slow clock, this is, it stays on for a very small amount of time, the other one goes off, and the next one comes on. The counter goes up by, uh, goes up to two, then the third LED from the right goes on. And when the counter is three, <clears throat> When we would want all of the LEDs to be zero, uh, sorry, off. So all ones, okay. 
and then you say end case and uh, end module is already up there let's go ahead and save it um, looks like there is no error but just want to make sure select the source file click synthesis will take a few seconds uh, awesome so this goes through again successfully uh, and now, now let's look at our um, plot diagram here so um, everything looks good everything has been done we need to just put to, uh, our system together in our top module uh, looks like our inputs are going to be switches and the clock and our output is going to be the uh, four seven segment display so let's put together everything and create a top module now so we will need the inputs which will be basically switches okay and because it's an 8-bit binary number so this will be 0 to 7 so user can use the switches to enter the 8-bit number uh, we need enable and we need four of those um, for the seven segment displays and then we also need the uh, segments right here uh, A to G um, those would be 0 to 6 so click OK okay uh, once we begin the coding uh, I think it would be nice to look at the wires first so we have one wire for clock out uh, um, so uh, we need two wires coming from the counter so wire uh, we have four bit data coming out of the mux so those will be wire and we also have these, this wire four of these zeros uh, ones, hundreds, uh, ones, tens, and hundreds. Okay, so wire. Um, zeros, ones, tens, hundreds. And I, I can actually say parameter uh, zeros equals to four. Right. so all the parameters have been taken care of it now uh, what I need to do I need to put the system together by instantiating all the modules we created okay uh, starting off with the uh, binary to BCD right here Binary BCD converter. So binary name it matches binary CD. Um, so oh one. So this is six. Running BCD converter. We got uh, inputs, which is basically our um, what do you call it? The switches and one stands in, uh, in hundreds as the output. Okay, so we would have switches as double ones tens. Moving on to the max now, so four max L2 identifier. Let's click on max right here. The inputs are A, B, C, D, S, S, and Y, Y. Okay, 
the four bit data, the data and then success and then the output one okay so the output okay so this comes out as ones um, we do um, zeros ones That is my A B C D, A B C D, and then I got S S and Y. Okay. Uh, so um, S is basically what? Uh, is basically counter out, which is right here. And then uh, counter out and max. All right. Now moving on to the slow clock. So slow S is low pace. L3 be pretty simple you have basically have clock here um, and then you have a clock out right uh, and this reminds me that one of the input that I'm missing is the clock add it over here and then clock out I already declared this as a wire which is right here so this is good um, now moving on to the counter which is 2-bit counter 2-bit uh, if you look at the 2-bit counter right here so the input is clock so clock and then you have the output is counter out uh, and then we move on to decoder um, missing identifier here l4 decoder l5 uh, and then looking at the decoder you have counter out as an input okay. uh, C is in lower case because lower case because it's got I got C over here and I have the enables uh, four of them okay. uh, and then uh, what else I got? Uh, I think um, seven segments remaining, I believe. Yeah, is right here. So this will be BCD seven. L6. Uh, so BCD seven segment is this thing right here. So we have mux out going in. And then uh, we have segments coming up, so which will be seg seven segments, and then we're gonna say and uh, it looks like a uh, oh, and what I already have it over here. Looks like I got almost everything. Let's just save it uh, and then synthesize it. Uh, notice how my hierarchy changes. Let me just everything is under the top module okay so I'm just gonna click on the top module and run synthesis okay it should take few seconds 
I was able to synthesize it successfully. Uh, and now, uh, before I can run implementation, I need to add the constraint file. I just want to let you know that there were a few errors that I fixed, and those were minor, basically declaring some of my output at, as registers, which I didn't do it. Um, so, these are all just warning that they're not, it's not going to have an impact upon. Okay, so some of the changes which I did here. Um, not here. Here I declared my enable as registers because uh, I'm storing the value, so those those need to be declared as, as registers. Uh, and uh, here, uh, that was fine. Clock uh, was fine i just added a register here uh, because again i'm uh, toggling the clock in and out so it stays there for about um, a few seconds and then four by one mug this was uh, this was again i had to declare this as register because i was uh, storing the values of a's b's and c's and d's and y's so anytime you're storing a value make sure you register declare them as register so these are the small changes which i did in my code if you run it and it'll give you an error it will show you an error over here and those are easy to fix so everything went fine i just need to uh, insert my constant file here so uh, right click here add source um, create constant uh, create file and i'll say uh, find me okay click finish so my constant file is ready uh, I just so this is my clock right here okay uh, my switches zero to seven make sure those switches name uh, matches exactly with the way you have in your top module so I'm using SW for switches CLK for clock an is an enable and seg segments SEG. Um, so here are my seven segment display. Uh, I'm not using decimal points, so I'm just not going to worry about it. And these are my four enables for this four seven segment. I'm going to save it, and it's about time that I should hit run implementation now. Uh, it's gonna run the synthesis again, but that's okay. Click yes here, and then wait for a few seconds. Now that the implementation is complete, I just clicked over here generate the bit stream and it's uh, generating a bit stream file and it should finish doing that in a few seconds. Uh, and once uh, that part is complete, we are going to click OK, make sure you have this open hardware manager, uh, check on and then open target, click open new target, click next, um, click next and then finish uh, program device click here make sure it will automatically actually upload the bit file click on program now you should be able to do uh, see the implementation of your design on the board so once you program the device you see the implementation of your design that you created using uh, Vivado uh, on the basis 3 board uh, right here at the bottom you see the switches right here um, and uh, you, those are eight switches right here and right now they are all set to zero so looking at it uh, because it's a binary to VCD converter it's actually all displaying zero zero now if I move this switch to on position which would make a code of one and you see one here okay if I change this to this will make three okay if i this switch goes on that makes seven triple one okay uh and then i'll do it one by one this goes one so that makes 15. uh this makes 31 this makes 63 this will make 127 and the last bit eight so all ones now so it makes a code of 255 uh, and that's what we looked at when we first started the um, 
doing this experiment, uh, we looked at the shift and the add three module algorithm. Uh, we started off with the 255. Uh, when all the switches are set to high, meaning all ones, uh, that makes a code of 255. Uh, I hope you like this tutorial. Um, if you run into any issues or any errors, please leave the, uh, the error code in the comment section and I'll try to look it up and provide you with the feedback. Uh, um, so uh, try it and uh, let me know if that works, okay? Thank you so much for watching this video and I shall see you guys in another one. Okay, bye.